What happened on the night of Diana and Dodie's crash? The mystery of how Diana died has fascinated the world for a decade. Diana was a popular figure in the media and was often referred to as the people's princess. She was a cultural icon and a prominent figure in the public eye. Known for her charitable work, her style and fashion sense, and her tumultuous personal life. But no one could have imagined that this charming princess had a tragic death in her destiny. Numerous conspiracy theories were generated by Diana's shocking death. Despite the passage of time, many people still believe Diana may have been the target of a conspiracy. Was it an accident? What do you think? And in today's video, we'll shed light on what happened on the night of Diana and Dodie's crash. So make sure to watch till the end. Many concerns and conspiracy theories persist concerning her terrible death, including the paparazzi's pursuit of one of the world's most well-known and adored individuals. But experts and investigators say that none of them are supported by any solid evidence. Let's recall the day and the incident. The day Diana died, Diana spent her final day with her boyfriend at the time, 42-year-old Dodi Fayed, a film producer and the son of Muhammad Al Fayed, the wealthy businessman. According to a boat crew member's recollections, the couple had travelled together by yacht for more than a week around the Mediterranean before arriving in Paris from Sardinia on August 30th, 1997. They had eaten together on Saturday night at the Ritz Paris, the opulent hotel owned by Fayad's father, before departing early on Sunday morning for Fayad's residence in Paris. At that point, the pair left the Ritz in a Mercedes-Benz driven by Henry Paul, who was the Ritz's deputy head of security. They had Trevor Reese Jones as their bodyguard. Are you curious what's happened next? Stay with us and don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Less than two miles from where their adventure began, the Audi reached the Pont de l'Alma tunnel. And shortly after, Paul lost control of the vehicle. The automobile was seen speeding dangerously. Paul struck the 13th pillar of the tunnel while attempting to avoid colliding with a white Fiat Uno in the right-hand lane, causing a deadly collision that killed both Paul and Fayed instantly. Reese, Jones and Diana both temporarily survived the impact. The Ritz to the tunnel took three minutes. Miley is, a passer, noticed a flaming Mercedes limousine that was almost in pieces as he was entering the tunnel. He made his way over to the debris, he then unlocked the door and peered inside. He further stated that two of them appeared to be dead, as they were not breathing or reacting. On the right side, the two additional individuals were still alive but in very bad shape. He was breathing so the front passenger could wait a few minutes, even though he was screaming. The young lady knelt on the Mercedes floor. She was struggling to breathe and had her head bowed. She needed help right away. Despite having a concussion, a broken arm, and a cut on her thigh from the collision, Diana's serious chest injuries were what ultimately led to her death. A tear in her pulmonary vein produced an internal hemorrhage. Her heart was misaligned in her chest, and she also suffered a fatal rupture. Her heart could not be made to beat normally after spending several hours in surgery. Eyewitnesses reported seeing several motorcycle-mounted photographers chasing the Mercedes-Benz before the collision, although it's unclear to what extent it had an impact on the driver's decisions. To discover the truth about Diana's passing, Britain opened what would end up being the longest-running and most expensive inquiry in its history. The paparazzi pursued the car after it crashed, but they stayed at the scene to capture Diana's last moments. But is that all? Don't you feel something is wrong? If you feel something is fishy here, let's hear out the conspiracy theories. The charges that Diana's husband was planning an accident in her car, brake failure and major head injuries for him to remarry were made in a note that Paul Burrell, Diana's butler, claimed to have written in October 1993. Similar worries were purportedly voiced by her in October 1995 to Lord Mishcon, her solicitor, who was informed by reliable sources that she and Camilla would be placed aside for Charles to wed Tiggy Legge Burke. To look into the many conspiracies that were put up in the run-up to the British inquest, the Operation Paget, Special Metropolitan Police Probe Team, directed by Commissioner John Stevens, was formed in 2004. As a witness in Stevens' 2005 testimony, Charles III stated that he was unaware of his ex-1995 wife's note and did not know why she had these thoughts. At the inquiry, conspiracy ideas were shown as being continuously advanced by Fayed, who also insisted that his son was killed alongside Diana. Following the deadly vehicle crash in Paris in August 31st, 1997, official inquiries conducted in both Britain and France concluded that Diana passed away in a way that was consistent with news reports. Diana's death was caused by a crash, according to a French investigation conducted in 1999. The French investigator, Judge Herve Stephan, concluded that the paparazzi were not at fault because they were a good distance away from the Mercedes S280 at the time of the collision. 
After hearing testimony at the British inquest, a jury in 2008 found that driver Henry Paul and the paparazzi chasing the car had committed unlawful killing. According to some reports, Paul's blood alcohol level was higher than what would have been expected given his sober demeanor that evening, as seen on Ritz's CCTV. According to forensic pathologist Robert Forrest, an alcoholic like Paul, who has a higher tolerance for alcohol, may be able to appear to be sober when, in fact, he is not. However, the Dodi fired and Henry Paul families rejected the conclusions of the French investigation. Additionally, the jury found that the deceased's failure to utilize a seatbelt and the fact that the Mercedes hit the pillar in the Alma Tunnel rather than hitting another object both contributed to or caused the deceased's demise. A well-known argument in favor of a planned conspiracy is the absence of CCTV footage demonstrating Mercedes's route from the hotel to the collision site. Although the Pont de la Alma underpass had more than 14 CCTV cameras, none of them captured the video of the fatal crash, according to the news report. Since they were mostly security cameras aimed at building entrances, none of them had any photos pertinent to the investigation. The majority of the cameras were privately operated by the building owners and were not maintained by the city of Paris. In the Place de la Alma itself, a traffic monitoring camera was located above the underpass, but it belonged to La Compagnie de Circulation Urbaine de Paris. That division had no night shift workers, shut down at 11 p.m. and did not make any recordings. Additionally, it was discovered that a photo that was labelled as having been shot immediately before the car entered the tunnel was taken as the automobile left the back of the Paris Ritz and was later released in a book by David Cohen, Diana, Death of a Goddess. At 12.26 in the morning, the first call to the emergency services switchboard was recorded. Diana's body, according to Mohammed Al-Fayed, was purposely embalmed soon after passing to ensure that any pregnancy test conducted during the post-mortem would return a false positive. The post-mortem examination's Robert Chapman noted that the embalming fluids would not have affected his ability to determine whether Diana was pregnant or not because the physical signs would have been there in her womb and ovaries. In the 2017 BBC documentary, Diana, Seven Days, Prince Harry, Diana's youngest son, stated, One of the things he believes is the fact that the individuals who pursued her into the tunnel were also those who were taking pictures of her as she was dying in the back seat of the vehicle. Prince William, who was 15 at the time, and Prince Harry, who was 12, learned of their mother's fate from their father, Prince Charles, when the family was on vacation at Balmoral Castle in Scotland, as news of the tragic tragedy soon went around the world. Diana's untimely passing shocked the populace and caused widespread sadness. That time, nation's ruler, Queen Elizabeth II, kept quiet in the days after the loss, aside from a statement noting that she and Prince Philip were startled and disturbed while the population openly wept and portrayed Diana's death as a national tragedy for Britain. The gates of Buckingham Palace and Kensington Palace were blanketed in floral tributes that day as mourners congregated in front of the renowned royal palaces in London. Diana's funeral was held on September 6, 1997. The cortege from Kensington Palace to Westminster Abbey was led by Prince Philip, Prince Charles, Earl Spencer, William and Harry, and Diana's brother. According to a former government relations director, Prince Philip's participation in the procession was a show of support for his young grandsons. Many films and documentaries have been made about her life and untimely death, including the recently released Spencer and the Princess and the acclaimed Netflix series The Crown, which demonstrate how her life and untimely death continue to be of interest to the public. Even after she passed away, the Princess's humanitarian programs and commemorative charities continue to benefit those in need. Now, tell us what you think. Are you one of those who believed in these conspiracy theories? Drop your thoughts on the tragedy in the comments below. If you liked our video, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to press that bell icon to ensure that you never miss a video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Until then, peace.